Hey, good morning guys. And as you can tell, we're now doing a little bit more paneling. So if you've ever wondered how we get from this to then this, this is how we do that journey guys. So come on this journey with me and see how I've done it, okay? So the first thing I've done is I looked at where we're gonna set the wainscot paneling. So what I've gotta do also is think about architrave doorways, how I'm gonna incorporate the paneling into the doorways and make it look like it's always been. So this architrave here, guys, is then gonna be absolutely matched on this side here, all the way on the head, all the way on the side rails, then also on this part here, on this side rail here, top rail and down this leg here, okay? So the first thing I've done is measured all of my relevant walls to the actual points where I want the paneling to come to. So from the bottom of the skirt to the top, it's 165 mil. So what I've then thought, right, if I go to 240, which is the height, now the height is from the floor to the top of the architrave, because that's where I'm gonna finish the paneling, because the paneling will go right up to the top of the architrave, and then I'm gonna put this nice nosing detail all the way along here. It's gonna look super cool, I'll tell you guys. Right, there's my top line, that's where my paneling's gonna finish. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get myself a bit of timber, which is 50 mil, because I've decided 50 mil is gonna work beautifully. I've then measured the size of the architrave, and the size of these architraves are 152 mil. I've measured them from that marking line there up to the top, 152 mil as well, and then I've leveled my line all the way across here, as you can see, all the way across there as well, guys, okay? Right, so I've lined it up on the top, this is then the vertical point. Then I'm gonna get this edge. So now a great example, you can see this corner. This is where sometimes you can make a mistake. It's really important when you make your corners, when you put your two 50 mil pieces together like that, don't then go and put another one over the top because don't forget, if you do that, you're not gonna have a true 50 mil, are you? it's gonna end up being like 42, 43 mil, because obviously the thickness of that is gonna take the 50 mil. So when I put that piece of timber on there, I will make sure it's slightly wider. So when this piece then butts up to it, you'll see a constant 50 mil. That's why I've marked it, marked it here. You see on this return here, I've marked it out, and look, there's my panel width there. And the other key thing, I've got sockets in my panel as well. So I've got to make sure these fall within my panels. I've got to make sure it doesn't hit a cross rail, it'll look horrendous. So I might have to ask the electrician, hopefully I won't, it'll fall just right. But if not, that's got to be slightly lifted up or tucked down. But we'll only know that once we start to mark it all out, guys, okay? The way I was taught, you always put your header and your bottom railing first. The only time you do it that way is, is if it's gonna be a door. Now, the other thing I've got to do now is I've gotta have equal divisions between this point and that point over there, so then I can start marking my widths and my panels out onto this wall, can't I, guys? And the same over here. And the other thing is that when I mark out these centers here, so what will happen is that when I get on my fixing brackets, I'll actually make sure they're all hidden behind these uprights and you'll have no horrible filling marks or anything like that, it'll look lovely. I've got this upright here, that's one. I've got another upright and then I'm gonna divide it by four like this, aren't I? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure now from this point of the rail here to this point of the rail, and then I'm gonna deduct 150 mil. And the reason I'm deducting 150 mil, because if you imagine three of these comes to 150 mil, I'm then gonna divide it then equally by four, which will give me all of the relevant points to the next 50 mil upright, then to the next one, then to the next one. My measurement from there to there is, Exactly, 16.07. Minus 150 equals 14 in, and then divide it then by four equals, there you go, 364.25. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mark along that line, okay? That's 364. I'd be interested to know what other levels people use. I don't know why, I've always used Stabila. I've never used anything else really. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna latch that one into there, just so you get an idea what I'm doing. Let's put that there. Happy with that. When I come to put these pieces on, they'll be absolutely spot on there, but this is the guy for my fixings. Do, 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 do. Right. 
and then that's it so you can see now that's going to be the more width of paneling so when I come to put my fixing plates on now here I know I'm going to put all my fixes all the way through the centre down here I'll just get my level so when I put the sheet of MDF any joins I've got which I'll probably put a sheet here and then another sheet here so the sheet will come all the way across 1220 look shine look there's 1220 there look misses the batting line so what will happen is I'll cut my sheet at that point there at 8 55 or 860 near the center and then I'll then cut the other panel and to go across into the back of this architrave onto the side of that lining and that's 970 that's what I'm going to do mark my 50 mil line on this side here I mark my 50 mil line on this side of this architrave here I'm now going to make a measurement a side of that 50 mil right that's actually a measurement there of 2086 I need to make sure I've got five panels there's two Three, four, so there's five. Four times 50 equals 200 mil this time, isn't it? So the measurement I've got, 2086, I'm gonna now minus 200 mil off that and then divide it then by five, okay? 3772. So first one, I'm gonna go there. There you go, that's one there. And then next one again. There we go, so there we go, we've got one two three four five panels now so the next thing i'm going to move on to now is i come across the other side of the architrave here i've now got from this point here to then the corner point here so i've taken a measurement from that pencil line there which is the true point over to this measurement over here and it's actually 1156. there we go 352 approximately is about there draw that in there at the top So the first thing is the skirting, which is 165 mil. Now the next thing I do want to do is I want to make sure at the bottom, I want to make it slightly heavier than 50 mil. So what I'm going to do is I want 70 mil at the bottom. Measurement from there to there. That's the 70 mil I want at the bottom. So I'm going to mark that up. There we go. Then obviously measure the full height of the 2240 now. So from the bottom of the skirting, which is representing the floor, Measure then 2240, so I'm going to go all the way up here. Now what you can do when you mark this out, I can just do a quick double check. I can actually take this in here, put this down there, look, there you go, there she is. There's my story rod to the top there. That's my skirting at the bottom, that's going to be the bottom rail. All I've got to do now is introduce the 50mm rail there and then divide it, haven't I guys? So let's do that now. 50 mil rail, it's gonna mark that up there, like that. And mark that, there we go, look at that. So there's my 50 rail. Now, do you remember me saying to you right at the very start, it's really important that we make sure this is pictorial. So in other words, we need to make the panels looking the longer. So at the moment, we know the widths are pretty much um, 300 and something mil. Now, what I'd normally punch for is something around about the five, 600 marks, so proportionally looks right. Three panels uh, in each of this. Then, so that at the moment is 1952. So if I go 1952 and divide it by three equals 650. So that, I reckon that's about right, that is 650 a centers approximately. Two pieces, which are gonna be 50 mil, 50 mil, that's then gonna be 100 mil. And the measurement is then again, 1952 minus 100 mil equals 1852. Divide that then by three equals then 617. So what we're gonna be using doing this wainscot paneling is by a company called Atlas. So what you've got is the way the disc works. It's got a, uh, a nut in here, and then obviously you adjust in this, this point to be level all the way through, and then you just spin the disc like that. What I can see at the moment, that disc is gonna go in the center here, so I can get a fix it at the top there, fix it at the bottom. When I come to 400 centers, I'll make sure I put a good mechanical fixing in the brick, not the mortar, guys, okay? So let's go and uh, get my level, and let's mark everything out, and let's get it drilled. So first thing I've gotta do is go to the center of the upright I'm going to level myself up so let's mark that up all the way down there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to 
is I'm going to mark where I want all the fixings. We were saying about the centre of the brick, so I've got a measurement here, I've gone centre of the brick here, and then nearest to 400, mark down, actually 400, doesn't quite work, hits the join, mortar line, don't want to go into that, I want to go into a proper brick, so that's what I've done. I'm going to measure the next one down, that's actually, look, 400 is on the mortar line again, don't want that, I want it to go here, middle of the brick. The key thing is, is I've gone about 440, 450 mil, across, joint line again, next one down there, so I've maxed it all out, all I've got to do now, get the SDS, just drill them all out. First thing I'm going to do, get myself a load of plugs, all I'm going to do is so I'm just going to do that, get a lady in like that, on that top tier. That just to change that noise. Hear it, the difference. There we go. The reason I'm setting this up, it just allows me to see this line through here. And you can definitely tell when this architrave was first set. I think definitely um, in the Victorian times they would have definitely set the face of the uh, skirting easily about here. So that would have been the thickness of the skirting, so these discs are going to go back. All I'm going to do now is get me cordless. I'm going to zip these in, I'm just going to plumb them up now. You see us fitting this uh, Atlas 3G system and uh, what we've been doing lately is we've been leveling all the pads because obviously it's quite flexible so if the wall is not you know plumb so you can just undo them and do them back and what we've been doing is we just get the level so when you put our paneling it won't be like wobbling it will be all nice and flat. We already got a few panelings on the wall like I'm going to show you now and we what we did here we use a a four screw system so each each pad is going to have four screws so when we screw it it's literally flat into the MDF so we found the centers of each of each pad get two screws on it and then it's nice and solid brilliant system and now I demonstrate me and Phil is going to demonstrate how to fit this panel in here Phil <laughs> as you can see it's a great system you just need a few screws now our oh, paneling is nice and plumb. Obviously we've got the crispy joint here, nice and tight, so there'll be no gaps. You can use this system in plasterboard, you can just use that instead of dabbing, or instead of button, you can just use this system, it's really effective. And what we did on this corner is obviously we go our 70 mil upright. What we done, we done a 22 and a half angle there with a nice 22 and a half, so it creates a nice beading. And then at the bottom, what we did, we create this little detail here. So what happens is we replicate what happens up there. So it's exactly the same detail. We try to keep the same, uh, you know, the same original from you know where the house was built. So. The top capping of our paneling is going to be a, a ball nose. 
So we decided to go for the 28 mm PSC and what we're doing here, we are routing the corner. So we're creating a ball nose here and then obviously we're gonna do the same on the other side. So it creates like a nice curve. We don't wanna to go to uh, create nothing too big at the top. So it takes away from the paneling. So we're just gonna create a nice detail at the top and uh, yeah, we'll look good. Basically I route one side of the PSC. So I'm turning this timber around like that and I'm gonna route these two edges now and then obviously we create a nice round ball nose. So what I'm doing now is, as you can see, we got our top capping with a nice curved uh, ball nose here. And what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna create a little rebate at the back. So our MDF is 12 mil, so I'm gonna bring, bring this 12 mil that way and seven mil, so it'll, it'll sit between our paneling and the MDF right at the top. So if you create a little rebate there, it'll sit just perfect at the top. Yeah, that's it. As you can see now, we've got a nice rebate, so we'll sit on, on top of our MDF and it'll be a nice fix and it, it won't tilt as well, so that's our top cap nosing. There we go. As you can see guys, we finished doing our um, MDF paneling now. So uh, the next stage, what we're gonna do, we're gonna set them up. Obviously we're gonna start on the door frame, nice and parallel like that. And we're gonna start, literally just start gluing our sapil into them into the paneling and, uh, you know, start, start getting shape. Perfect. And today what we're doing, we are gonna start fitting our transoms. It's gonna go across. So what we did to divide our paneling was we got two of this down here, like that. Then what we did, we measured from there to the top of the two transoms there. And then what you do, divide by three, and that gives you exactly top to bottom where the transoms need to go. So you got two, two bits of stick. So after dividing the top and bottom of the paneling, you cut the stick at the size of, obviously your calculations give you. And then you just put them there. You get transom on, push it down so it's nice and tight. Fix, fix some glue. And then move the, obviously the sticks. All the way around, all the way through, all the way through the paneling so you get a nice straight line. Obviously one more thing, when you, obviously when you cut your um, sapili, Make sure you find like the best side. Moving along, I always put quite a lot of glue. Makes a nice, a good fixing. As you can see, our paneling is done pretty much. All the mullions are fitted, glued, nailed. Everything looks really nice and uh, square. And now, next step is our beading. So what I normally do, I cut a little bit oversized pieces of beading. So the two long ones, and obviously the two small ones, like that. And the best way, obviously there's different ways to do beading, but the best way, I think, is, so you cut your first 45, put it against your paneling, mark the other 45, and then make sure it's nice and tight, you don't want the beadings to be moving. Yeah, cut the first 45 and we'll see how it goes. So our 45s. So we got our beading with a 45 as you can see. So what I do, I just put it there. 
Like my 45 there. Okay, cut it again. There we go, first beating there. Then you got another one with another 45. Like that, go again. Make sure the beating is really nice and tight. And there we go. That's a nice and tight beating. Doesn't even need glue or nails. Guys, as you can see, our paneling is finally finished. Uh, our decorator Ronaldo done a great job here, and to be honest, I'm really pleased. Everything looks really nice. Let me just show you this, and obviously you can't see it because it's secret. You press it, it opens. The, the, the door was recessed in, and we had the post here. We couldn't do it because of the skirting board was gonna bite on the post, so what we decided to do, we cut the third of the post off, and we attach the post to the door. So when you open the door, a third of the post comes with the door. That means we can put the skirting board against the third of the post there, and they don't fight with each other. And I think it looks pretty mint. And another thing I wanna show you is our corner there, our paneling, just looks really nice as well. All this detail here, that's another nice detail there. Always we kept the same little detail that top and bottom there. And yeah, as you can see, really pleased and thanks for watching. Uh, I'm Oli, you're watching Building with the &E, and uh, see you next time.